In this lecture, we will cover the superposition circuit theorem. A circuit is linear if the following conditions are true. The circuit should consist of entirely of resistors and dependent and independent sources. The circuit inputs are the voltages of independent voltage sources and the currents of all independent current sources. And the output is the voltage or current of any element of the circuit. The output of a linear circuit can be expressed as a linear combination of the inputs. So V out is some type of constant times V1, one of the inputs, some type of constant A2 times V2, and so on and so forth until the last input Vn. Of course, our inputs could have been also currents. The inputs of the linear circuits are linearly independent. This is a concept from the linear algebra. Superposition theorem states that the output of a linear circuit due to several inputs working together is equal to the sum of the outputs due to each input working separately. So if I have the input V1 and my output is V output 1. Similarly, if I have the input V2 and output is equal to V output 2. The output of the whole circuit is the output of the inputs from those individual voltage or current sources. All right, now we need to find the output of the circuit V0 as a linear combination of the inputs V1, V3, and I2. So this is a very good example where we can utilize uh, the superposition principle. Our first step is to calculate the output due to the V1 by setting V3 is equal to zero. V3 is equal to zero, it will act as a short circuit. And I2 is equal to zero, it will act as an open circuit. And we end up with a very simple circuit where V output one is equal to one over five times V1. Because I have a voltage divider consisting of 40 ohms and 10 ohms, and I find the output as V01 is equal to 1 over 5 V1. I will simply continue with the second uh, input, which is V3. So I will short circuit the voltage source, and here I have 40 ohms, then here I have plus minus V3 and here I have my 10 ohms over this 10 ohms I will have V output 2 because this is the second output and I short uh, open circuited the current source so it's not connected so let us write the Kirchhoff's current law 40 times voltage load 40 times I plus V3 plus 10 times i is equal to 0. From here I have i is equal to minus v3 over 50. And from here I calculate vo2 is equal to 10 times i, which is equal to minus v3 divided by 5. This is vo2. Now I need to find V output 3 due to the input I2. So I will simply short circuit the voltage sources. This is I2. Here I have 10 ohms. Here I have V out. V out can be considered here. Here I have 40 ohms. So let us write the Kirchhoff's current law for this node V out 3 indeed. V out 3 divided by 40 is the current going out this way, plus V out 3 divided by 10 ohms, which is the current going out this way, is equal to I2. From here I can find 5VO3 is equal to 40I2 and I end up with 
VO3 is equal to 8I2. So I found V output 1, V output 2, and V output 3. According to the superposition principle, V output is simply V output 1 plus V output 2 plus V output 3. From the previous slides, I can find this is V1 over 5 minus V3 over 5 plus 8 times I2. So this is the final result of this question. Now here I have a circuit with a dependent source. It is a current controlled voltage source with the controlling current here. And I need to find this controlling current's value. How will I solve it? I will solve it again for each of the voltage and current sources separately and add the outputs together. So let's do it first for the voltage source. 24 volts, 3 ohms. 2 ohms, my dependent source, plus minus 3i. I open-circuited the current source, so it's open-circuited here. And I have the flowing current i here. So if I write the KVL for this loop, I end up with 5 times i plus 3 times i is equal to 24 and from here, I can calculate I is equal to 3 amperes for the input of the voltage source. Now I will calculate the output for the 7 ampere current source. Let me draw the circuit again. 3 ohms, 2 ohms, plus minus 3I. Here I have 7 amperes. Voltage source is short circuited and my current I is defined this way. So I will proceed with node voltage analysis. I will write here VA. So VA over 3 plus VA minus 3I divided by 2 is equal to 7. Let's simplify this expression a little bit. 2VA plus 3VA minus 9i is equal to 42. So this will be 5VA minus 9i is equal to 42. So I need to find some expression for VA. What is VA? VA and I can be related these, this way. I have i is equal to minus VA over 3 because I have here 0 volts, 0 minus VA divided by 3 is i. So Wherever I see VA, I can write then VA is equal to minus 3I. And here I have then minus 15I minus 9I is equal to 42. So according to I have minus 24I is equal to 42. And I is equal to 42 minus here divided by 24. I can divide everything by 6 and I have here minus 7 over 4 amperes. So then I have the current for the first input. I have the current for the second input. Accordingly, I total will be 3 plus minus 7 over 4 and this will be equal to 5 over 4 amperes. Now we will solve the same question using four different methods and we are starting with the superposition. So let us uh, draw the circuit for the voltage source as the only input by making the current source open circuit plus minus 10 volts, 3 ohms, 8 ohms, continue drawing. Here I have 10 ohms and this 10 ohms will be in series with 6 ohms. So I will simply have a 16 ohm parallel resistance. 
So, and if I just find the equivalent resistance here, it will be 8 in parallel 16 is equal to 1 over 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16, and this will be equal to 16 over 3 ohms for this one. And here I have IA1 for this voltage source input. That IA1 will be equal to 10 divided by 3 ohms plus 16 over 3 ohms, 10 volts. And this will be equal to 10 volts divided by 25 over 3 ohms. And this will be equal to 30 over 25, which is equal to 1.2 amperes. So IA1, due to the 10 volt voltage input, will be 1.2 amperes. But we are not finished. Now we will need to find IA2 due to the 2 amperes current input. Now I will solve uh, for the 2 ampere current source, assuming that this 10 volt source is short circuited. It does not exist here. We can use mesh current analysis or node voltage analysis to find the IA2. Since I am more comfortable with node voltage analysis, I want to use node voltage analysis and I will write KCL for VA and VB. Let's do it together. VA divided by 3 plus uh, VA divided by 8 plus VA minus VB divided by 10 plus 2 is equal to 0. Let's write this in a more neat form. 40 times VA plus 15 times VA plus uh, 12 times VA minus 12 times VB is equal to minus 240. Let's collect these terms. 67 VA minus 12 VB is equal to minus 240. This is my first equation. Now I need to find another one. So let's write for VB. VB minus VA divided by 10. So this is the current going this way. Plus VB divided by 6, this is the current going this way, is equal to 2, which is the current entering from here. So let's simplify. 3VB minus 3VA plus 5VB is equal to 60. Further simplifications, minus 3VA plus 8VB is equal to 60. This is my second equation. Now we need to solve these equations together. So let's make a trick. I will multiply this equation by 3. And I will multiply this equation by 2. Let's write what I end up with. 134 VA minus 24 VB is equal to minus 480. And for this one I have minus 9 VA plus 24 VB is equal to 180. So if I add these, I end up with 125 VA is equal to minus 300. So accordingly, VA is equal to 300 by 125 volts. If I have VA, I can simply calculate minus, minus, minus 300 over 125. I can calculate IA2 as minus VA divided by 3 because it is minus because the current is entering to this node. So I write this as minus 300 over 125 times 3 and it will be minus minus so I will put here a plus sign 0 0.8 amperes. Now from the previous slide let's remember that IA1 was equal to 1.2 amperes. I now found IA2 is, is equal to 0 0.8 amperes. When I add these together 
I total is equal to 1.2 amperes plus 0.8 amperes, which is equal to 2 amps. So I solve the question using the superposition method. Let's solve this question using source transformations. Uh, since I have to leave the IA intact, I will restrict my source transformations to the right side of the circuit. I have here 3 ohms. IA is flowing through that. An 8 ohm resistor here. And let me apply my first source transformation here. 2 amps plus 10 ohms, it is 20 volts. And since the current direction is towards right, I will put the positive polarity towards the right side so i have 20 volts here and i will do one more trick i will add 10 ohms and 6 ohms because they are in series here so i will write here simply 16 ohms now i will do one more source transformation back to the current source let us try to do it together here i have plus minus 10 volts 3 ohms 8 ohms here and here I will have 16 ohms as a parallel resistance and the current source will be pointing downward because current from here would go towards this direction with the value of 20 over 16 amperes. Now I can do one more reduction. I can Reduce these two resistances uh, to a single resistance because they are in parallel. So 8 ohms in parallel, 16 ohms is equal to 16 over 3 ohms. So then I will go back and create a voltage source from the 16 over 3 ohm resistance and the 20 over 16 ampere current source. So this current is going downward. So plus minus 10 volts here I have 3 ohms I will write here 16 over 3 ohms and the voltage supply with the polarity minus plus 20 over 16 times 16 over 3 which is equal to 20 over 3 volts so now once I have this the current IA is here I can write IA is equal to 10 minus 20 over 3 but it is with a negative polarity so it is minus minus 20 over 3 so it's plus divided by 3 plus 16 over 3 and this will be equal to 50 over 3 divided by 25 over 3 and I will have as IA 2 amperes. So I was able to solve this question using source transformations. All right, the same question once again using node voltage analysis. What do I do in node voltage analysis? I first define my nodes. Here I define VA and here I define VB. And I will write the Kirchhoff's current laws for these nodes VA and VB. I should not forget that my reference node is here. VA minus 10 divided by 3 plus VA divided 8 plus VA minus VB divided by 10 plus 2 is equal to 0. Hmm, let's simplify this. What is the least common uh, multiple of uh, these? Uh, 40, 120, 120. 15 and 12 and I need to multiply this with 120 so I will have 40 VA minus 400 plus 15 VA plus 12 VA minus 12 VB and this will be equal to minus 240 this is one of my equations let's simplify this further further by collecting the terms 40 55 67 times VA minus 12 VB is equal to minus 240 plus 400 is 160. This is my first equation for node A. 
All right, let's do node B. I will use a different color now. This current is going out. This current is entering and this current is going out. VB minus VA divided by 10 plus VB over 6 is equal to 2. Now 3VB minus 3VA plus 5VB is equal to 60. So from here I have minus 3VA plus 8VB is equal to 60. I will multiply this equation by 2 by 3. And I will multiply this equation by 2. So I will end up with minus 6VA plus minus 9 VA plus 24 VB is equal to 180 and for the upper one I will have multiply by 2 134 VA minus 24 VB is equal to 320 if I add these two equations I end up with 125 VA is equal to 500 and from here I find VA is equal to 4 volts. If VA is equal to 4 volts I can find from this equation minus 12 plus 8 VB is equal to 60 and from here VB is equal to 9 volts. Maybe I didn't need to find VB because the question asks me IA. IA is equal to 10 minus VA divided by 3. And VA is equal to 4. So this is equal to 6 divided by 3. And therefore 2 amperes. So I found the current IA using the node voltage analysis. And last but not least, we will be solving this circuit and finding IA using mesh current analysis. I am getting tired and bored. So let's define the mesh currents. So the first mesh current will be IA. Second one will be I2. And third one will be I3. Here I can write simply I3 minus I2 is equal to 2 amperes because this 2 ampere current source is shared by the two meshes and accordingly I can write a super mesh equation the super mesh will be this 10 times I2 plus 6 times I3 plus 8 times I3 minus IA is equal to 0 and let me write this in a simpler way 10 I2 plus 14 I3 minus 8 IA is equal to 0. This is my first equation. Let this be my second equation. And third equation is the mesh for the IA. 3 IA plus 8 IA minus 8 times I3 is equal to 10. Let's simplify. 11 IA minus 8 I3 is equal to 10 and this is my third equation so in order to solve this I can use this equation and get rid of the I2 or I3 terms so how can I do this I3 is equal to I2 plus 2 accordingly 2 will become 10 I2 plus 14 I2 plus 28 minus 8 IA is equal to 0. So let's do some accounting. 24 I2 minus 8 IA is equal to minus 28. And similarly, if we do the same thing for the third equation, I end up with 11 IA here and minus 8 i2 here and this will be equal to 
if I am not wrong, to 26. So I will multiply this last equation with 3. And I end up with 24i2 plus 33ia is equal to 78. And I will add these two equations. I end up with 25ia is equal to 50. From here, I find ia is equal to 2 amperes. Indeed, it was very simple to solve this question using the mesh current analysis. As you can see, as long as I follow the rules, I can solve a circuit using superposition, source transformation, node voltage analysis, or mesh current analysis quite easily.